Welcome to the Shades of Havana podcast, where we explore the rich history and culture of one of the world's most iconic cigar-making cities. Ybor City has been synonymous with premium cigars for over a century, thanks to the pioneering efforts of visionaries like Vincente Martinez, Ybor and Julius Caesar, J.C. Newman, and the countless families and businesses that followed in their footsteps. From the bustling cigar factories that once lined Ybor City streets, to the boutique shops and lounges that dot the city today, Tampa's cigar industry has left an indelible mark on the city's identity and character. Join us as we sit down with the industry experts, passionate enthusiasts, and local legends to uncover the stories, traditions, and innovations that have made Tampa Bay the cigar capital of the world. Whether you're a seasoned enthusiast or a curious newcomer, we invite you to light up, relax, and journey with us into the fascinating cigar capital of the world. Welcome to Shades of Havana with your host, Michael Doyle. Shades of Havana was brought to you by celebrating their 75th anniversary, Porsche Tampa, the global leader in two-way cigar humidity control, Bovita Inc., award-winning air purifiers, Rabbit Air. Turn your garage or basement into the ultimate man cave with Man Cave King. When you're looking to purchase or refinance your home, fund your bliss at Bliss Mortgage. For the latest styles in golf and beach apparel, Fluke Apparel Company, premium quality lifestyle eyewear with 100% mineral glass lenses, Otis Eyewear, and treasure awaits. Visit Tampa Bay. Welcome to Shades of Havana. I'm your host, Michael Doyle. We are filming here at the Corona Cigar Company in Tampa, Florida, formerly known as the cigar capital of the world. This has been a historic weekend as we've filmed both at the J.C. Newman Cigar Company Warehouse, now at the Cigar Company uh, here in Tampa. I'm joined by special guest. If you don't mind introducing yourselves and tell us what you're smoking. Absolutely. Well, my name is Francesca Attardi, and I'm a cigar, you know, lover, I guess you would say, right? And this is a first time smoke for me. West Tampa, white label. And I have to tell you, I smoke Cubans all the time. This is identical to any Cuban I've ever had. I am so amazed about how good this cigar is. I'm buying a box. Do you wish that you would have had that as your first cigar earlier or? Uh, honestly, I'm gonna tell you, I liked it better than the Partica D4. Uh, the, the well, it's a shame Ricky uh, left because if he had heard that, it would have given I, him, made I him know, feel wonderful. I, I am so in shock. This West Tampa white label, I'm in love, I'm sold. If I'm, you a, haven't I'm a new had customer, it. I'm a new customer. Well, and I think many more people would be. And if you haven't had one, you should definitely check one out. West Tampa Tobacco. Go ahead. Oh, so smooth. Mm. So smooth. So my name's T, cigar specialist, Corona Cigar. I'm smoking the Davidoff Anniversario. Very Connecticut, very light, not too harsh, and kind of short. So I give it a little tour size, it's not too long, and it doesn't take all day to smoke. One of my favorite ones, because again, it's light, has a very uh, Connecticut vanilla nut kind of taste to it. What I like about it. Right. Right. My name is Charles Rodriguez. I'm the CEO of Cigar Stash, and I'm smoking the exquisite Davidoff Royal. Now, we're here at the cigar, uh, or Corona Cigar Company here in Tampa. I gotta ask you, how did you get the nickname T? So, my real name is Tavares. Everybody calls me T. My nickname is Titan because of my size. I got that out of high school and college. So that was my nickname. So like you, uh, I, my last name is Doyle and nobody calls me by my first name anymore. It's always Doyle because of the Adam Sandler movie, Oh Doyle Rules. So I wish I could get that back. But do you like tea when you're here? Yes, I take tea because my full name is Tavares Lavelle and Abinant and that's a tone twister. <laughs> so nobody wants to sit there trying to say that name all day. <laughs> So let me ask you guys here, you know, we're here. Uh, it's been an incredible experience. As we can tell in the background, the scenes are lively. It's been a ton of fun. We've had some historic uh, and influencers that are across the cigar world coming in, joining our panel, our first time on the road. Fran, what has this experience felt like, you know, not just on the show, but being a part of history? Oh my God, uh, I love it. I've been so excited and so honored and I would never have taken a five hour ride for anyone to Tampa outside of you for Shades of Havana. It's my love. I love watching your show. I love everything about it. It excites me. 
and I just feel part of a community. Like, uh, I'm invigorating it. I, I would never for anyone take it. I mean, a flight is less than five hours to most places. It took and a little it, negotiating. It was worth it. No, it was worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. And you excite all the audience out there. Oh, I love you it. You are, to date, our highest rated watch show, which is exciting. Oh, I'm you know, honored. Which is one of the major reasons we wanted to bring you back. You know, Charles, when, it, when you all talked about before, you have a company, you, you talked about enjoying the cigars. What is it that makes you love cigars so much? And do you, are you drawn to a certain flavor or brand? Like, how does that work? So, well, I started smoking cigars um, simply because of the community around it. You know, that's what kind of drew me into cigar smoking was there's a whole large community out there of people that are generally of a like similar mindset in certain ways. You know, you go to a cigar lounge, you can generally assume that nobody's going to be an asshole. You know, it's a, it's just a good environment to be in. And, you feel um, safe, right? Like you feel yeah. safe when you're here. Yeah, exactly. You just, you feel like when you're around cigar smokers that you're just around good people. You know, it, um, it's, it's not bad for you at all, right? The FDA disproved that in the 2019 study. Yep. Cigar smoking is perfectly healthy as long as you don't, you know, smoke more than a few a day. Um, and it's just, it's, it's this really just great collective of people that are just all around good. You know, T, I have to ask you a question. You know, uh, I, I live in the Jersey Shore. So for me, you know, to be on the road, to be here with you, uh, I could feel your energy when I first walked in. You know, hey, how can I help you? What, you know, what, what is it that you need? Uh, you know, just let me know if you need anything. You know, you were extremely accommodating. It felt great, you know, to know you have somebody in case something, you know, was to fall short. You know, for me, when I go out, I like to go to places where I know people. You know, it's about building that relationship, establishing that level of rapport. You like to go where people make you feel good. I can imagine that you don't just make me feel good. You do it throughout the entirety. What is it about people, this atmosphere, that makes you, like, lively? Like, what is it about working here that makes you feel good? Uh, just the, uh, the opportunity to meet different people and just have an opportunity to interact with different people because you have so many people in Tampa. You have so many people all over the world that's coming out here that's wanting to get that experience. That want, so you want people, when they come through that front door, you want these people to come in and you want them to feel welcome and you also want them to feel, hey, I want to come back. You know, I want that experience. So you want people to feel good. You want people to feel welcome. You also want to feel that presence of putting that out there to, hey, we want you back here. We want you to come back. And whatever you can't find another cigar lounge, we want you to find it here. But we also want to do it with, hey, love, kindness, and a smile on your face when you leave out of here. A great experience. And experience is one thing, but, you know, relationship, it goes back to relationships. You go to a local bar or a restaurant because you know somebody. It's like, you know, that connection with a bartender, right? You go there when they're, when they're working that particular night. So do you find that your clientele uh, picks and chooses certain nights over others because you may be working, or is it more? Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely, 1,000%. 1,000%. I've, I've, I've gotten phone calls. I get emails. I get text messages of, hey, I'm only coming there because you're there. Are you yeah. working Yeah. Tonight? Oh, you're working tonight. I'm <laughs> coming you because tonight? you're there. Now, in terms of you, Fran, and also you, Charles, like do, when you're drawn and you want to go out and have a cigar, cut loose, break away from, you know, life's adversities, we're living in a crazy time today, right? Are you drawn to go to a particular cigar bar because there might be somebody that you know or a group of people that you can meet up with and hang out or? Well, I know it's like you were saying, it's like-minded people. And today everything is so versatile. Like, vers it, like people want to attack and you come here, you know you can relax, you have your friends, yes. you have a community, and, and you just have a really good time, but it's effortless. It really is. Charles? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've got my, my cigar lounge. Shout out to uh, Old Times in Castleberry, Florida. <laughs> um, that's always a good thing, another connector, so. Yeah, I and mean, that's, that's, that's where I like to go. You know, I like to hang out there because, you know, you get into a lot of uh, cigars, it's kind of like a barber shop. You know, you can, you can talk about pretty much anything. You know, that place is full of conservatives, so I get along real well there. Um, you know, it's just, it's, a, it's an environment of people that are of a like mind, you know? And um, so that draws me to that place for sure. You know, you, you look good. Yeah, and your opinions aren't like thrown at you and, and disparaged. It's the, the people, even if they don't agree with you, will speak to you and actually want to come to a common like understanding and listen to your point of view versus saying no well i think you're wrong 
I think generally speaking, this may not be like politically correct, but I think generally speaking that the people that smoke cigars are just a higher caliber of person. You know, you're dealing with more emotional maturity. You're dealing with more just mature people in general, not, not in age, but in mindset. Yeah, and it doesn't matter their, you know, economic background either. No, not it at all. It really doesn't, because kind of, it's all different levels. And you see this more than anyone, right? Yes, ma'am. You'll have someone who's like, I want that bottle up there that's like 500 or shot. And then you'll have someone who's like, I'll have the beer. And it's, they're coming together. Yes, ma'am. Can't judge a book by its cup. No. Can't. No, you can't. And you know what? That's one of the most unique things about going to a cigar lounge. One of the reasons of why this show was created, you know, when you can go out, come in, not know anybody. Fran, you travel quite a bit. Right. I mean, you moved from New Jersey to Florida, not knowing anybody. Right. You stated that, you've mentioned it. You know, being out there to walk in, you know, not only just as, you know, for me, I hate to go out to dinner alone. Oh. I hate to do anything alone by my, you know, by myself. Right. For you, and you for embrace a woman, it. Yeah, and for a woman, it's, it's a little uh, scary to go out there alone. You know, you don't know what you're walking into. You know, you always have to be safe and concerned about your environment. And uh, being in a cigar bar, I always feel safe. Those guys and the women that are there, they make sure you're walked out to your car. They take care of you. You are part of them. You're family now. Yes, and family is key. But when you walk in, are you open? Are you, like, personable? Oh, or 100% you, you, are you open. reserved to, oh. to get a feel for the type of atmosphere you're in? Uh, and, you and everyone's like, what are you smoking? Oh, that's what you have. And it, right. it, it, it's a bridge. This is a conversation right here. Why did you pick this cigar? Why do you like it? How long have you been smoking? So you're open for a conversation. People yes. want to engage with you. Right. Versus when you go to a bar and you sit down at a chair at a, at a bar stool with a drink, people don't speak to me maybe for 45 minutes. Like, it, they don't even talk to me. But given our times, you know, whether or not they talk for 45 minutes or not, you know, you find more people open to you know, interjecting into somebody else's conversation. Here, we're at Cigar, or Corona Cigar uh, Company, and you can hear the noise in the background. People yeah. are having fun. Yeah. Now, T, you just shared before, I said, you know, did you have a client that we could bring on that maybe you were a preferred customer? He said, I don't know anybody. So isn't that the greatest thing about people coming out, you're meeting new people every day. What is that experience like for you, and how are you able to establish or build a relationship to bring people back that aren't from your local area? It's uh. It's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool meeting new people because for me, I don't know a stranger. So I'm always used to uh, just gravitating, pulling people in. Okay. Um, as the experience, so I'm from Greenville, South Carolina, which is also a growing town, which is also a big area that's growing as well. We don't have cigar lounges up there like that. They're starting wow. to get some, but they're not getting a lot. Um, for the most part, being able to just have the ability to communicate and build a brotherhood and a sisterhood and a bond and a family here. You know, to just people that I don't even know, to be able to do that, that's one of my greatest like, attributes is being able to bring people together and to have that. Have, and you know, when you ask somebody, hey, what are you smoking? What do you have? You know what? And you can communicate and go back and forth and say, well, try this one. And you can try what the next man has and he can try what you have. Well, let me ask you, what's your joy? How much joy does it give you when you meet a person, you help them find a cigar, and they're thrilled? It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's definitely a thrill. And it okay. feels good to know that you help them enjoy that and have something and then they're okay. going to come back and buy it. Interesting question, because, you know, when it comes down to helping people find a cigar, is it easily uh, identifiable for you to understand? Like, you know, you could ask people, what's their budget? But not knowing if they're looking to stretch, right, right. or looking to take in. Is it easy for you to uh, to decipher which ones or like how do you establish which ones they want to buy to, in order to establish that trust? I used to I always ask them, you know, what style do you like? What do you like? Something light, medium, or mild? And what uh, what's your price range you want to stay in? Okay. What's something that we can help you with? And we try to idolize them and narrow it down to what they like. So usually, if they know, if I know if they want something flavored, it's easy to just take them to a flavored out. I know because a lot of the younger crowd, a lot of the younger ladies, they're gonna say, hey, I just want something sweet. You already know right then and there what you want to give them. It's great stuff. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna be right back.
Shades of Havana and Cigar Journal thank you for celebrating and watching our historical J.C. Newman 128th year anniversary series. As a sign of appreciation, we'll give you a one-year free subscription to the digital magazine. Access the best information on the global cigar world at Cigar Journal. Scan the QR code and apply the coupon code SOH23TAMPA prior to checkout. What's up, everybody? Chris Payne here, CEO and founder of the Fluke Apparel Company. In honor of this historical event, the Fluke Apparel Company will be offering a nice little discount for all you Shades of Havana, you cigar enthusiasts, conversational enthusiasts. Um, all you need to do is go to flukeapparelco.com and at checkout enter the letters SOH and you will receive a 15% off discount of your entire purchase. Uh, for those of you that don't know us, we are a beach and golf apparel company formed right here at the Jersey Shore and we are excited for you guys to be a part of our family too. Visit Tampa Bay. And we're back here at the Corona Cigar Company in Tampa, Florida, formerly known as the cigar capital of the world. Uh, T, let me ask you, there are several different cigar lounges, bars that have certain at, you know, accommodations. This to me is special. Uh, you do offer liquor. Do you find that when you know, people go to a cigar lounge, uh, that you know, people tend to have a cigar or two. Because you have liquor, do they tend to stay even longer? They're gonna to tend to stay longer because they want, a lot of them, they want good bourbons. They, they want a lot of good scotches to go with them. Obviously, as you can see here, we have one of the biggest premium, premium selections here because back home, we don't even have this. I've never seen anything like this. When I first started here, I never seen a wall like that. The wall was great. The last great wall I seen was in China, but this right here is a great wall. This is a great <laughs> wall, is what I call it. It was a ladder. A, la a ladder. Like, oh, you, know, you, you know you have a great selection when you have to climb a ladder to get the liquor. Now, I, I just have one question. Out of curiosity, how long did it take for you to learn all this? Uh, I would say I'm a fast learner, so it probably took me about a good, uh, about three months, about three months. I'm, always, I'm a cognac guy myself, so it didn't take me long to really understand. I don't really drink scotch and I don't really mess with bourbons and stuff like that. I'll sit one here and there, but because I already knew about cognacs, it was, you know, already I had some knowledge of it. Now, Charles, you mentioned that you have a cigar company. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So, um, yeah, we've got Cigar Stash, which is an accessory. You know, at the end of the day, it's pe people we see a lot of people, right? When you smoke a lot of cigars and you spend a lot of time in lounges, you see a lot of people waste cigars, right? How often have I seen somebody or I've been in a meeting and somebody wants to jet, you know, because they've got somewhere to be, they end up putting their cigar away and never to be smoked again and they waste half a cigar. Um, so my partner, David, uh, came up with an invention that snuffs the cigar, um, extinguishes the cigar and keeps it um, good for later, right? And it's also, I mean, it's convenient, you know, it functions, cigar stand, all different kinds of things. So it's just all about kind of making the smoking experience better, right? It's, that's, that's really what it's all about, yeah. right? And then also saving money. You know, if you can, if you can save money by preserving your sticks, coming back to it later, you know, everybody wins. Right. Now, where can people find your product? Uh, CigarStashUSA.com. Okay. And we're also going to be in a bunch of retailers. Uh, we just launched recently. So we're in um, about seven cigar shops nationwide currently, um, all over Florida, uh, a little bit up in the Northeast. And uh, we'll probably be in a cigar shop near you anytime soon. T, I have a question. So, you know, given the fact that what percentage of uh, the population or your market would you say are actual? Uh, Tampa residents and then what percentage actually come in from all over the US or if not world? I want to say probably over maybe 70% maybe 70% it's a lot of we get a lot of regulars in here uh, But we also get a lot of world in here as well um, so 
sometimes it can be 70%, but I, I've known the differentiation of 50, 50, sometimes 50, 70, 70. It's, it differentiates. It depends on what's going on out here. You know, we're in Tampa. You know, obviously we got the Bucks. Obviously you got the Lightning. Obviously you have different things going on. So whatever draws the crowd out here, you, you're going to get people from all over. So I would say probably, at the most, probably 60%. Interesting. 60%, 70%. So like in Cheers, everybody knows your name. <laughs> for those that don't live around here, is it easy for you to remember those that come back or? So a lot of times I'm good remembering people's faces. I don't forget faces. Names, I'm not so great with them, but if you remind me, nine times of 10, I can remember it. But a face, I don't forget a face. You guys enjoyed your cigars or? Oh, I, I gotta say, because remember, this is my first time smoke. That ash. Are you looking at this burn? I haven't only had this with Cubans that last like this. West Tampa tobacco. You, this West Tampa, it's blowing my mind. I'm sorry. It's a fantastic cigar. Now, when it comes down to buying, now do you guys stay for those who are not cigar enthusiasts and those that might be looking to branch out, try a new cigar, maybe get out and experience a new cigar lounge? Like, do you have an idea in terms of like what cigars that they should try or a budget that they should stay within? I mean, how do you guys go out and purchase your cigars? So I always tell people when I'm introducing someone to cigar smoking, um, you know, I really often I'm, I'm smoked Davidoff, Monte Cristo are kind of my two go tos. Uh, Monte number twos primarily is like my daily smoke. Um, I always tell people is don't start with something too heavy, right? Don't start with something too strong. Start with like a, a Connecticut or something mild. Um, don't spend a bunch of money because it's just going to be a waste. Um, and at the end of the day, if you spend a bunch of money on your first cigar and then you go and you start to try to smoke something more affordable for a daily smoke or just when you go to the lounge, it's kind of, it's going to mess up your palate a little bit and your expectations. So I always try and start people off with the Monty White series is kind of my go-to. And I'm going to tell you too, for women, I would say to start with something more mild too. I really, honestly, because they can get turned off and then they'll lose the love okay. of like this enjoyment that you can have of sitting back and relaxing. Because to me, like I said earlier, it's like therapy yes. and you can just really enjoy yourself and sit back and it's, it's me time, which we don't have a lot of me time anymore for ourselves. So we're so busy with work. And I would say that definitely for women, start off with a lighter wrap and move up. Do, do that nice oaky, woody kind of mild. Okay and then move up as you experience and learn about cigars. And I know what me, I, I went very light with, uh, I think it was Havana Sunrises I started with. Okay. Yeah, an 858s. Those were like my first. And then I moved up to a dark Maduro, but now I'm coming back down. Now I'm, I'm coming back down to this nice medium. And it's like a great it's it's interesting experiment. I think it's also, it, it's, it's important to not understate how bad nicotine sickness can actually turn somebody off from smoking cigars. So it's like, you know, I've seen those guys that take somebody to the lounge, especially women, you know, and they'll give them like a Padron 64 or something. And it's like funny when they get sick, but it's really not. Because no. that person's never going to want to smoke again. They're going to hate like, it. They're going to speak badly. So I always make sure to tell somebody, drink a Coke, you know, take some, take some sugar first, do something, smoke something mild. If you start to feel lightheaded, put it down. You know, it's not like a sense of ego or like right. man manhood right. if you can smoke a cigar and not yeah. get sick, you know? That's the fastest way to turn somebody off from smoking. Do you have a favorite cigar lounge here in the country that you've visited or? Favorite cigar lounge in the country? That's a tall order. Um, I would honestly have to say Corona here. Um, you know, I live in Orlando, but. Don't be biased just because you're here on set. I'm no. just, okay. No, this, is my, this is my go-to. My wife loves Tampa. You know, we come out here, we'll get on the boat. Okay. And um, this is kind of my go-to when I'm in town, and it's just, it's a nice place. You know what I mean? The atmosphere is nice. The vibe is nice. The selection is nice. It's not everywhere that you can get the, the Royal or the, or the Davidoff Oro, some of the nicer, nicer sticks. Right. So it is really nice to come to this lounge because they just do everything right here. That's yeah, great. Yeah, I haven't seen something this nice in a long time. It's this absolutely place. tremendous. Honestly. Honestly. Now, Fred, uh, you live where? I'm in Palm Beach right now. Now, where do you like to spend the majority of your time when you do go to cigar lounges? So there is a new place that just opened up on Worth uh, called Churchill. Stunning. Not a private club, which is nice. Okay. You know, and it's, it's small, 
little boutique and I, I adore it. That's one of my new favorites right now. But I would go down to Boca and go to Strikes a lot. Strikes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I like it. They were, uh, when I came down here, they welcomed me with open arms. They, I'm telling you, they treated me like family. They're like, come back next week. And, you know, we're putting you it's on the list. It's an amazing sentiment. I invite you to things. Right. And it, was, it was really amazing. It's, I had my friends. It, uh, you know, for us, as we, uh, for the first time, took the show on the road, and as we continue to look to build this out, uh, for us, it's all about education. You know, the average cigar smoker, uh, you know, that travels, it, you know, everybody is, when you get there, the, a cigar enthusiast is looking for a place to go. So when you can talk about and share experiences, talk about different locations, you know, it's so important because people can reflect and go back to it and be like, oh yeah, I remember, you know, this person saying so and going in and, you know, reciting where it is that they heard it from. And, you know, it really truly is a community. I mean, for us, when you think about uh, the people that are out there, you know, us, you know, no matter what walk of life that you are, uh, people coming together, establishing relationships, building a network, you know, creating a community when society is pushing us back, you know, and trying to break us away. You know, that to us is what feels good about doing this show. T, being on the set for a first time, have you done a podcast before? Or I have done a podcast before. Okay. Um, I've done a podcast. I've also done music and worked in recording studios. Interesting. All right, so you're an artist. Yes, sir, I am. I am. I'm an artist, songwriter, and composer. Wow. I okay. I now, where can people find any of your... Uh, you can find uh, my, my IG is TitanGT3. Um, on Facebook, my name is Travaris and Navinit. I'm also on Spotify. My artist name is Titan. And out here in Tampa, Florida, I do work at a studio it's called Grand Bay Studios. So you can find them over there off of eboard. Just type in Grand Bay Studios is where you can find them. That's fantastic. Now, you know, uh, to leave people with an idea, you know, we're all here. This is an experience. We're experiencing history, right? Capturing with some of the biggest influencers around the world. We had Ryan Hold, we had Rick, you know, we had Tommy come in. You know, it's just our show is continuing to grow. Things are continuing to evolve, you know, get better. Um, what is it that you think that, why do you think people should follow Shades of Havana based upon your experience on coming out here today? Very professional, very uh, well put together, um, great vibe, um, very knowledgeable, good education, um, letting the crowd, letting the people know, and also make you feel at home. But, you know, you guys make me feel at home. I, I didn't even know you, and I feel... Well, well, we're family now. Yeah, we're family now. Right. I'll, I'll, we exchange hugs afterwards. Or... You can't get rid of me now. <laughs> <laughs> Charles? Primarily, I would just say, I mean, you know, I've, I've done several podcasts, and, um, you know, I think it's important to follow this one because it's, 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 it hits the right points, I think, that the cigar community should be focusing on, but also people that are trying to come into smoking cigars that may feel intimidated, they can learn some stuff, and the biggest thing is, is there, I haven't seen any bullshit, you know, you're not, you're not just here. This isn't like a thing, just hawking a product. You're not shilling for anybody. You know what I mean? You have real people, real opinions, and it, it's just a good, good piece of content for people that are into cigars to consume. Absolutely. Fran? And I would say that what really makes me love Shades of Vanna is your importance to making women a part of your show. Absolutely. Hearing our voice letting us be a part of this male dominated, you know, genre right, yeah. in a way. And you actually go out of your way to make sure that women are showcased and a part of it and a part of the community and let them know that they're welcomed. Well, I think, you know, creating a level of comfort in everyone's minds, you know, whether uh, sex, um, you know, race, it doesn't matter. You know, for us, uh, you know, when you come down for a cigar, you're not getting up and walking out unless you get pissed off at what somebody says, you know, a comment just happens that, you know, frustrate you. For us, you're coming out, you're looking for that therapeutic release. And for us, it's about building community. We are committed to building community. That's why we're so focused in on committing to taking this show out on the road as we have and celebrating historic milestones like this here with UT, yes, Tommy before. And as we continue to strengthen our relationship, we're looking for big things to come. Um, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to come out and watch uh, this episode and our special guest. So our only question for them is, what are you smoking? Shades of Havana with guest host Michael Doyle and special guests Francesca Atardi, Tavares Inabinet, and Charles Rodriguez. Co-producers John P. Doyle, Steve Zimke, Kara Guayardo. Producers David Zimmel, Erwin Sternberg, Ricky Rodriguez, Reinhold Widmeyer. Executive producers Sean Sternberg, Michael R. Doyle. Directed by Rod Weber. Created by Michael R. Doyle and Rod Weber. Camera and sound Charles Rodriguez and Oscar R. Urenera.
Editor, Steve Zimke. Special thanks to Charles Rodriguez at Big Boy Media Group. The Detour Duo, Tony and Sarah, travel content creators. Senior Editor and Chief of the Cigar Journal, Reinhold Widmeyer. Co-Founder of West Tampa Tobacco, Ricky Rodriguez. And thanks to Jeffrey Borshewicz, President and CEO of Corona Cigar Company, for allowing Shades of Havana to capture the beauty and unique setting of Corona Cigar Company, Tampa. Shades of Havana was brought to you by Tampa Porsche. Bovida. Rabbit Air, Man Cave King, Bliss Mortgage, Fluke Apparel Company, Otis Eyewear, and Visit Tampa Bay. Shades of Havana and Cigar Journal, thank you for celebrating and watching our historical J.C. Newman's 128th year anniversary series. Access the best information on the global cigar world. Everything that happens in the premium cigar industry, news, launches, personalities, awards, and above all, our cigar rankings and blind tastings. Scan the QR code where you will receive a free one-year digital subscription to Cigar Journal. Our sponsors' websites and phone numbers are also provided in the show notes. When you visit our sponsors, you're helping them and helping our show. And if you enjoy Shades of Havana, we hope you tell your friends and give us a great rating wherever you get your podcasts. All opinions expressed by the Shades of Havana participants are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Shades of Havana, Inc., a subsidiary of MRD Productions, LLC. Shades of Havana is an MRD production.